الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. And I was just joking with Sheikh Saad. I was like, man, your your talk was so fire. You 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 set off the alarm, Subhanallah. And I was like, how do you you know start a lecture after fire alarm has gone off, Subhanallah? But it's beautiful how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala brings everything together. If you remember the beginning of Sheikh Saad's talk, what did he start off with? أحسب الناس أن يترك وأن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون. Does mankind think they will be left to say we believe and not be tested? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tests us all in different ways. This was my test, and Alhamdulillah, I'm content with Allah, whatever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has decreed. It is with that sentiment, my dear brothers and sisters, realizing that we are the property of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created us to serve Him. That I introduce to you this talk, Islam, a just way of life. There were two companions that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had paired together, Abu Darda and Salman al Farsi. Salman went to visit Abu Darda one day and he was not home. His wife opens the door and she's in a not comfortable state. Her clothes are, 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 are raggedy, she doesn't look presentable. And he asks her, why are you in such a state? And she says, Akhuk Abu Darda laysa lahu hajatun fi dunya. That your brother Abu Darda, he has no need of this dunya. So what is the point of taking care of myself? And Abu Darda wasn't home, so Salman excused himself and he comes back later on. And when Salman comes back, Abu Darda does the hospitable thing and offers some food. But Salman says, I'm not going to eat till you eat. And Abu Darda, he mentions that he is fasting at that time. And Salman reminds him that the etiquette of the host is that if the guest is to eat, then the host has to partake as well. So he eats at that time. Night time comes. And Abu Darda is very anxious to wake up for Tahajjud and for Qiyamul Layl. And every little while he keeps waking up and Salman reminds him that go back to sleep, wake up in the last third of night. And this happens several times till the last third of the night comes and Salman wakes up Abu Darda and says, let us pray together now. After they're done praying, Salman starts giving him some advice. He says, Inna li rabbika alayka haqq. That indeed your Lord has rights upon you. Your body and your soul has rights upon you. Your family has rights upon you. So fulfill the rights of every possessor of rights over you. When Abu Darda heard this advice, he goes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, Ya Rasulullah, is this advice sound advice? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Sadaqa Salman, that Salman has spoken the truth. My dear brothers and sisters, I begin with this example because when we talk about Islam as a just way of life, we need to understand what justice actually means in this context. Our scholars tell us that justice is to put everything in its proper place. And in order to do that, you need to know where everything belongs. And that starts off with knowing the rights that you have to fulfill, starting off with the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love it, alhamdulillah, that we live in a day and age where Muslims are conscious about social justice. We're aware of the various causes across the globe, whether it is Palestine, whether it is our Uyghur brothers and sisters, whether it is our brothers and sisters in India, and everywhere else in the globe. It's a beautiful thing. But in such a day and age when you're constantly bombarded with different causes, do we sometimes fall short with our responsibilities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'd like to highlight this for a single second, just for a single moment. And this is to remind myself and you that we are people, not only of physical means. It's not just about marching. It's not just about writing letters. It's not just about creating awareness. But it's also about seeking the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the body that is strong but is spiritually weak will not be successful. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guides us and educates us to be spiritually strong and physically strong. That spiritual strength needs to be there as well. And that only comes in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in our seeking of justice for others, let us not do injustice to ourselves by falling short in worshipping to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Praying our Fajr prayer on time, being good to our parents, giving our zakat and giving our charity, we may think that these are the fundamentals of Islam and that's all they are. It's the very basics. But my dear brothers and sisters, this is what gives us our spiritual strength. 
The slave of Allah does not come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything other than that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obliged. So when we fulfill our obligations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us strength. I want to share with you something beautiful that Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu shared with his companions that as they're on their way to Jerusalem, Abu Ubaid al-Amr ibn Jarrah, he sees Umar ibn Khattab in these simple clothing that has patches that he, Amir al-Mu'mineen, has stowed himself. So he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I've seen the rulers of the Byzantine, I've seen the rulers of other empires with all of their luxurious and pompous clothing. Are you not more deserving of this? And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, subhanallah, he was a merciful and just man. And he had this statement that he used to scare people with, but subhanAllah never implemented. He says, Ya Abu Ubaidah, had it been anyone other than you that said this, I would have struck them. And he says, Ya Abu Ubaidah, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ أَعَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ فَإِذَا ذَهَبْنَا نَبْتَغِ الْعِزَّةَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ أَذَلَّنَ اللَّهِ that we are a people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given honor, might, and respect through our Islam. And when we seek that honor, might, and respect through other than Islam, that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliates us. My dear brothers and sisters, this is not to say that this is the only cause of humiliation. Yes, there is oppression in the world. Yes, there is cheating, lying, deceit, betrayal, backstabbing happening in the world. But how do we get out of that predicament? It starts with us turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It starts with us turning back to our faith. It starts with us making sure that we are not doing injustices to ourselves before we seek justice for others. This is the sunnah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established that when the ummah turns back to remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turns back to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that is when the help and victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. Allahumma ameen. Number two, when you look at the rights of the body and the rights of the soul, spiritually, emotionally, even mental health, this is all a part of Islam. And it's amazing that Alhamdulillah, we're, re we're creating more awareness in this day and age about mental health. But if you look at the advice of Salman, what does he tell Abu Darda? That your own soul has rights upon you. The way that you maintain yourself and your soul and your mental health well-being, that is a part of it. Psychological strength is very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters. And this is why when you look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his approach to Salah, what was his approach to Salah? He used to tell Bilal Radiallahu Anhu, Arihna biha ya Bilal, bring us comfort, bring us serenity, bring us tranquility through the prayer ya Bilal by giving that adhan and letting us reconnect with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When we think about psychological well-being, it's not just about going to a counselor, not just about going to a therapist. All of those are important things and means that should be sought but that spiritual means of connecting with the Qur'an, of making the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why else does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'inul qulub, that it is only in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the hearts do find rest. So when we talk about bringing justice, a part of that equation is making sure that we are taking our care of our own mental health. This means managing your own stress, managing your own anxiety, seeking help when you need that help. Be proactive in seeking that help. My dear brothers and sisters, there is no shame in seeking help for our mental health and for our psychological well-being, just like there is no shame if someone were to go to the hospital for a broken arm. We have to treat them equally and we have to eradicate the stigma that exists within our communities with regards to mental health. Someone says that they're seeking help or they're taking a break for their own mental health well-being. This should be encouraged because that means that they're trying to get stronger to help the cause of the ummah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regularly did that through his worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we take care of our mental health and when we take care of our well-being, then we can actually care for the causes of the ummah. But if we get burnt out and we can't even take care of ourselves, how are we going to take care of other people? And this is why, my dear brothers and sisters, there needs to be that spiritual focus in mental health where you're re-engaging and spiritually rejuvenating by taking care of yourself so that you can connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then take care of the ummah as well. When you look at the secret of success of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he used to pray through the night in order to take care of the ummah during the day. 
And that is the secret to success that we need to go back to, that in order to restore justice in this world, it will not happen up and until we are taking care of ourselves spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, by connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And then number three, Salman mentions, وَلِأَهْلِكَ عَلَيْكَ حق, That your family has rights upon you. And subhanAllah, in this day and age where the family unit is being destroyed and completely disregarded for, it is our responsibility as Muslims, our responsibility as an ummah, that we restore the very family values that the Quran and the Sunnah and the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came with. My dear brothers and sisters, family is integral to Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commands us in Surah Al-Tahreem, Ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Save yourselves and save your family from the hellfire. So after you've taken care of yourself and protected yourself, it is our responsibility to protect our families. And there's so much that can be said about this with regards to the rights of the parents, with regards to the rights of the children, regards to the rights of the spouses, and everyone else. So Islam is a family religion that one should be concerned of in a time where people are taught to be very individualistic and care about number one alone, care about themselves, we have to be counterintuitive to that, where we are altruistic as the Prophet ﷺ teaches us that we care about others more than we even care for ourselves with regards to the matters of this dunya. And a part of our success is making sure that we can guide our families and help our families achieve the utmost success, not only in this life, but in the hereafter as well. And when we have this altruistic perspective where we want people's success not only in this life but in the hereafter as well, that is when justice will be restored. My dear brothers and sisters, people are unjust because they care only about the life of this world. People want more power, people want more money, people want more fame and that is what they think is going to be their ultimate success. But we as Muslims, we need to practice before we preach. That we put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, we put our akhirah first. Jannah is our ultimate goal. And when we can restore these own values within ourselves, that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will restore justice in this world. It's going to take time, it's going to take patience, it's going to cause a lot of hardship and grief. But keep your eyes on the prize that as long as we get to Jannah bi ta'ala at the end of the day, everything else will seem irrelevant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested us with the injustices that are happening in our times to see how we respond. Those that are being tried, those that are being oppressed, they are being rewarded for their patience. They are being rewarded for all of the hardships and calamities that they are going through. But us that are sitting in comfort, that are here able to enjoy this amazing family convention that we're here for today, my dear brothers and sisters, our test is our response. And what I want to conclude with in these final two minutes is that we cannot allow ourselves to burn out. And a more focused approach to social justice is needed. Not every individual can care about every single cause. It is impossible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create our hearts and minds that strong that we can equally care about every cause. So naturally, some of causes will naturally have affinity in our hearts, whatever it may be. Whatever that cause is, my dear brothers and sisters, take that cause as far as you possibly can. Create awareness for it, petition, march, do whatever you have to do. But understand that you will not be truly successful up and until you are right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we need to support this ummah with, that if someone's supporting one cause, someone's supporting another cause, we're not in competition with one another. This is one ummah at the end of the day, and we support every single cause, but our focus should be able to take whatever cause we can participate in as far as we possibly can. How do we do that? It starts off by us being spiritually strong and connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Us reframing our understanding and contextualization of the Quran and the Sunnah to be relevant in this day and age. And us turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking His help and following the prophetic example of being empathetic with people and being sympathetic towards people and caring for people beyond even our own selves. This money, this fame, this power will all fade away. 
and the only thing that will remain are the sincere deeds that you did for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the things that you strove for for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to restore justice in a day of injustice is one of the greatest of good deeds that you can do and that starts off with fulfilling the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfilling the rights of your body, your soul, and your mind, fulfilling the rights of your family, and then fulfilling the rights of the greater community. When we start off with these small baby steps and make change within our spheres of influence, that is how we change the world. And I leave you with the exact same words that Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor this ummah as long as this ummah continues to submit to Islam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as soon as we abandon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have sealed our own fate. And in our pursuit for justice for others, let us not become unjust to ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our sins and shortcomings, unite this ummah, and help us restore justice in these times. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.